By summer, Sergeant John Creasel still lives in Washington, but now he's an outpatient at Walter Reed. But in July, John and his wife decide it is time to take a vacation, so they drive back to the Midwest for a very important reunion. Here again is Carol Evans' Joe Fryer. They've been gone a very long time. Family reunions are a staple of most military homecomings, but families are not allowed at Volkfield, Wisconsin, as members of the Minnesota National Guard return from Iraq. I can't wait. Sergeant John Creasel, however, is more than family. Very, very excited right now. Almost sick. You see, the plane touching down is filled with members of Bravo Company, two of the 136. Now I see some faces. Otherwise known just as Creasel's Company. You look the same, dude. So glad Good to see, see you, man. Good to see you, dude. Creasel drove here from Washington to see the soldiers he served with for eight months before losing his legs to a roadside bomb. You look good. You, you look, look good. No, I don't. You got legs, bro. <laughs> it would have taken every branch of the military to keep him from greeting his soldiers Nelly, dude. and his best friend dude. from greeting him. Good to see you, dude. Good to see you, too, man. <laughs> How are you hanging out, man? I'm doing all right, man. Good to see you, dude. Good to see you, too. Oh, you look good. Better than last time yeah. you saw me, huh? Better than last time. <laughs> Staff Sergeant Tim Nelson was in the Humvee December 2nd, sitting right behind Creasel when their tire triggered the explosive. It is so good to see you, dude. It is so good to see you. I love you too, man. It's so good to have you back. It's so good to have you back, dude. Good to see you, man. You look good, man. You look good. I heard you yelling, man, and I, I wasn't going to let go if you were telling me not to. After the helicopter took Creasel to a hospital in northern Iraq, Nelson, who needed stitches after the blast, was at his side. Um, I got to go sit by him for about uh, three or four hours and uh, just kind of hold his hand. And uh, they were still unsure if, uh, if he was going to make it. It was the last time any of them saw Sergeant Creasel until this moment. Good to see you, dude. Yeah, nice to see you, man. Good to see you. Creasel also gets to see the soldiers who rushed to his aid right after the explosion. We were about 150 meters ahead of him. We heard it and it struck us. Sergeant Todd Everson was in the Bradley vehicle driving ahead of Creasel's Humvee. He's like, hey, I need tourniquets, I need tourniquets. I'm like, John, they're already on, they're already on. He's like... Okay, okay, you know, we just told him to be calm, but yeah, he, he was a little bossy even in that situation. Oh, oh. <laughs> What's up, brother? How you doing, dude? Good to see you. Bossy, but grateful. You saved my ass. I would be dead without you. And Creasel isn't just reuniting with fellow soldiers. Is that my weapon? Oh, yeah. This is my weapon, dude. That thing's jacked up. It still works, though. Oh, yeah. His old M4, the one with him during the explosion, also made the trip home. John, you, how you doing, you were, sir? You are looking good. Thank you. Looking good. Good to see you, sir. Man, uh, you know, we've been tracking you all along and just so proud of all your efforts. The final hug comes Very from well. Lieutenant Colonel Greg Parks, the battalion commander and last of the 2,600 Minnesota Guard soldiers to step off a plane and onto Volk Field. We followed you. Marveled at you, <laughs> and uh, we've, we've appreciated everything that you went through to, you know, show what a true hero looks like. Um, you guys are the heroes, sir, and those three guys that saved me. There were also three lives lost. A giant banner with their pictures greets the soldiers in the hangar. They say it was tough staying in Iraq after those deaths, but it was part of the mission. You no, know, you want to stay for those guys, if anything. So they, uh, you know, they weren't afraid. They went out there. And so uh, that's, that's pretty much what got me through, you know, stay for them. After the soldiers turn in their weapons, a huddle quickly forms around Sergeant Creasel. So good to see you guys. They have many months worth of catching up to do. Uh, last time I saw him, it was pretty full of blood, so it's really nice to see him. The reunion is cut short for now as the soldiers take buses to nearby Fort McCoy to begin a week of demobilization. I mean, I honest to God, I would not be here without those guys. And how do you, I mean, how do you thank them? I mean, they're, those are heroes, man. So, I mean, to see them was just, I mean, I, I had to fight not to cry. It was, it was good. Of all the Minnesota companies serving in Iraq, Creasel's group saw more of a combat role. They went door to door combing for insurgents in and around Fallujah. And after Creasel left, they found a torture house with three men inside, beaten 
and chained to beds. They were scheduled for execution within the next 24 hours, so they were pretty happy to find us, or we're pretty happy we found them. Of the 200 men in this company, 24 earned Purple Hearts. It's a pretty highly decorated unit. And now, as they prepare to receive all their awards, Sergeant Creasel, God. Sergeant Creasel is standing with them. We know that uh, when a guy gets wounded, a guy leaves the company, that he's still a part of us. And this is a great, great time for us to welcome these guys back. Let's hear it for these guys. In front of a small audience, mostly composed of Katie and the kids, Creasel receives the Combat Infantryman Badge, an award given to infantry members who take part in active ground combat. But that's not all. The Bronze Star Medal is awarded to Sergeant John M. Creasel. Creasel is also getting the Bronze Star Medal one of the highest awards in the U.S. Armed Forces. Wow, does that look good. Congratulations. Thank you. His commander is proud that Creasel is not only here, but standing in formation with his men. And never once looking to take the easy way out of grabbing a seat, moving off to the side, because he wants to be a part of Bravo Company. Been one of us from the, the uh, very beginning, and he'll be one all the way to the end. John, we salute you. Sergeant Creasel is a, a true patriot. It's going to probably do more for the Minnesota National Guard and Bravo Company than any of us. But when it was time for soldiers to receive their Purple Hearts, Sergeant Creasel was not among them. He got his Purple Heart in December at Walter Reed from his commander-in-chief. I mean, he takes over a room. He walks in and it just, you get the feeling that everything's okay. Despite what happened, Creasel supports the president and the mission 100% and he would do it again. The, the chance to go and try and help other people, maybe just get a little taste, maybe a little peek of what we get every day as a gift from God, you know, that then it's absolutely worth it. And yeah, I would do it again, I would. Coming up on Standing Tall, a soldier's story, Sergeant Creasel returns to Minnesota for good. His new hobbies, his new job, and his first taste of politics. We are winning on the ground and making real progress. It's no time to quit. 